Palmerston North Square was a buzz with words like borers, strainers and chamfers during the Hilux New Zealand Rural Games weekend. New Zealand's top speed fences battling through quick fire heats and semi-finals with eight being whittled down to just three. The final featured defending champion Hawks Bay's Tony Bowskill, his father Shane and a first timer Cambridge's Sam Burton. Mike, uh, what are they doing? In the final here today, um, Mark, they, they are putting a couple of guide wires up like you would in a fencing situation. They're putting a diagonal stay assembly in, they're breastplating the far end, and then they're putting two posts in the middle of that line, and, and it's straining it up to 150 kilos. So the two Bowskill boys involved in this today, uh, this is Tony. Tony's pulled his guide wire tight and he's looking, he's placing his stay. So he's got a mark on that strainer there and he's going to chisel in his stay, which is a mortise. And um, that'll be as fitting as, as a joiner does some furniture. So very, very high tech. So Shane's come from the other end of the of the field, and what's he doing here? So what Shane's doing here is digging in a, what's called a breast block or a, um, a block, and we're using a half round um, block this, this morning, and that has to be 20, uh, 50 mil below ground level. So he's making that um, the hole about six inches or so down. So watching this, it's um, has to be have to be centred on that strainer. So he's measuring the. Uh, the block there to make sure the, the competition sort of in the right position. You know? What does that uh, half round actually do? Is it just secure it up? That takes the pressure of the wires on the, on that strainer. Sam Burton's from Cambridge and, and he's fairly new to competition industry but um, Sam's doing a great job. He uh, He's really sort of looked at what he had to do and he's thought about it. Speed fencing is physical and technical and the old hand Shane's work is all coming together. He'll fit that into that nice little mortise hole that he's made. Look at that. And then he'll just look, look at this, he'll wedge that down like that. Nice. That's exactly what you want to do. Perfect. <laughs> Sam's just putting his post in now so um, He's, he's got that borer dug going hard, he'll pretty, he's, got, he's got a good line, he's got a very good line, there's uh, no stones in that hole like there was with Shane previously. Making sure he goes deep enough but not too deep. And this of course is time and quality isn't it, so it's a combination of both. Absolutely, we're, we've still got to do quality fencing. Tony's putting his staples in, so it's a slice point staples and they go in on an angle so they don't get too much wind chatter. A quick tidy up adds quality points and the defending champion Tony finishes first. He found the trouble. There they are. He's done it. Well done. So Tony's finished, Sam's coming up now. So here we go, now he's got his final two twists. Final two twists on this. Little flick. There he goes. He's done. Well on you. So he won the race and the judges said he had quality workmanship too. So Tony Bowskill retains his title, Hilux New Zealand Rural Games Speed Fencing Champion, with his father Shane having to settle for second this year and Cambridge's Sam Burton in his first final in third. Do you enjoy the speed fencing? Yep, very much. It's quite good. Yeah. What is it about it that you like? Oh, just the competition and um, just really the physical challenge, yeah. really. So. And the pressure, you feel the pressure? Uh, yeah, before we start I do, and then once we're into it, yeah, it's just go okay, same as it work, go hard as you can. Here we are at the Powerco Have A Go. It's a chance for the little kids to get involved, but not just them, the big kids as well. Are we ready? Three, two, one, go! There's no such thing as a free lunch, and that's exactly the case here at the Fonterra Milk for Schools Blender Bikes. You have to work for your smoothie, and I'm taking on Chad here, who thinks that he can beat me at uh, making a smoothie on these cycles. You believe that, Chad? Yes, I do. Yeah. Why? Because you work out? Yeah. <laughs> Humble guy, eh? All right. So what we're going to do, mix our smoothies, and we're going to see who can do it the fastest. You ready, Chad? Yep. All right, here we go. You want to count us down? Yeah, let's go in right. three, two, one. Bring it, Chad. Come on. Oh, Come on, Chad. He's cheating. Keep your bum on the seat, Chad. Keep your bum on the seat. All right, guys, we've got another five, four, three, two, one, and stop. I think we've got a winner over here, to be honest. Who's the winner? Chad. No.
Well, I hope victory tastes sweet to you in that beautiful smoothie. Cheers, buddy. Good game, good game. There's grit and determination required when you take on a pile of coal in a hurry. But it's grist to the mill for the likes of Team New Zealand in a match race against the Manawatu Turbos. Team New Zealand boat builder Sean Regan and Cyclores Guy Dean and Simon Van Velthoven shoveling against the clock. Five, four, three, two, one. Three of them at once. Three of them at once. No way. We've got a cyclor. We've got a boat builder. We've got a grinder. So we've got two muscle boys in there. Let's hope the boat builder doesn't doesn't let them down. But we can see it's frantic. Poor old Richie. Richie Banks is getting smooth. Three, two thirty, two sixty. They need another one. Two seventy, two eighty. Stop! 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 Gee, I thought they were never going to stop. Eighteen point three two seconds. And they got 380 kilos, and I couldn't stop them. So to the local rugby heroes, the Manawatu Turbos, Sean Paranihi, Tim Cadwallader, and two-metre-tall Liam Hallam Eames, with 18.3 seconds to beat. Go. They're off. We've got the America's Cup boys in their sights. It's pretty messy, though. There's a bit going out of the... It's pretty scrappy, it's pretty untidy, there's no real synergy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, 240, 260, 270, 280, 290, stop! Stop! Oh, ladies and gentlemen, the men with two turbos, 1582! 1582, the men with two turbos have just beaten the America's Cup. Liam, well yeah, done. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Uh, we've been practicing all week, so uh, we knew it was going to be tough, and uh, it's good to come out with the win. Have you been shoveling a bit of coal? Yeah, yeah, we've been shoveling all week at training, mate. We've put the balls down, and we've got into the um, banjos, and uh, we've been shoveling coal all week. So, yeah, it's been bloody good, mate. They're on a serious matter. How did you find it? Was yeah, it hard? Yeah, it was tricky, mate. It was tricky. Uh, just just getting the stroke rate right with the amount of coal was, yeah. was a real tricky part. Yeah. So, but we got there in the end. So. Good on. Well, you got there by three seconds, and that's quite a quite a victory, I'd have thought. Yeah, quite a victory. Um, you know, bragging rights? Yeah, bragging rights for sure, mate. For yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The winner of the women's singles was Cantabrian Julie Stetchman. And the men's singles was the real deal, West Coaster Royce Green. So it was a South Island clean sweep with Julie Stetchman winning by just two seconds from Dell Adams. And in the men's, Royce Green a 2.3 second win over Daniel Brinkio and the evergreen 62-year-old Richie Banks. The rural athletes traded black singlets and gumboots for suits, ties and high heels for a night of glitz and glamour at the Norwood Rural Sports Awards. The event recognises outstanding achievement in the rural sports community and over 400 gathered to celebrate with New Zealand sporting royalty present to hand out the awards. 17-year-old rodeo exponent Tegan O'Callaghan claimed the Young New Zealand Rural Sports Person of the Year. While the Outstanding Contribution to the Rural Sports Industry Award went to Owaka's Jude McNabb, event manager of the highly successful 2017 World Shearing Championships. Porongaho's Paul Van Beers, 30-year association with the sport of speed fencing, earned him a Lifetime Legacy Award. Lawrenceville arborist Chrissy Spence took out the Rural Sportswoman Award for a second time after winning an unprecedented fifth world title at the 2017 International Tree Climbing Championships. It just shows that you know you can pass your job as a sport and yeah, and it's a good way to get good at something as well. And Napier Shearer John Kirkpatrick emerged victorious as the Rural Sportsman of the Year. Great nephew of All Black Ian Kirkpatrick, he won both the World Individual Shearing Championship and the World Teams title. After 25 seasons of open class shearing and 169 titles, he's still hungry for more. My aim is to actually try and make the Worlds next year to go to France in 2019. So for us in New Zealand, like we'll do a selection year next year. So that's my aim at the moment and then I think after that we'll see what happens. And even special guest All Blacks coach Steve Hansen was impressed by the quality of the athletes. Just a good reminder that it doesn't matter what sport you do, you know, you've got to have uh, a real dedication to it and a passion and, and a real love for it. So, and I, I think it's a wonderful night. Coming up, the ultimate rural teams event when Dog and Master meet the challenge of controlling six wily sheep on the Hilux New Zealand Rural Games.